Uh, some of the challenges of converting the space into residential use were actually pretty minimal. The, the space was already, back in probably the 70s or 80s, converted into several small apartments. So the biggest challenge was just kind of clearing that out to get to the, to, to the structure or to the, to the goal of just making this into a very open loft feel. But again, the, the building itself provided a lot of just basic structure to, to make that, that part pretty easy. Uh, some of the opportunities that were taken advantage of for the design, literally the, the walls were kind of the biggest thing that you know kind of allowed this to become a law. The building itself, when it was questionably created in 1890 or 1910, there's, there's debate on when that happened, but the, the, the building was actually spanned between two previously existing buildings. So the current interior walls on both both sides were, were really just the, the walls of the buildings on either side. So using that kind of really helped create the feel of just this open loft and also kind of gave kind of a nod back to the historical aspects of what this was a long time ago. Some of the advantages of living in historic space are, are the background story. Really from a standpoint, you know, back when we were able to socialize more, uh, it was it was always nice to have, you know, little aspects of the building where you could create story, you know, new stories about that you could share with people and just kind of become a conversation piece. Some of the advantages of living in a loft are just, just the openness and honestly, not quite a minimalist anymore where, you know, I've definitely started to acquire more again, but it really kind of limits in making that decision of do you really need something, but just kind of keeping it simple and keeping it open and, and that, that sense of just having a lot of space around you. And that's, that's really the reason I, I think loft living is terrific. Advice that I would give people who want to take on a project like this, the, the biggest would probably be patience in, in just knowing that there are probably parts of it that you're going to find come into challenges that you weren't expecting up front and you're just going to have to be patient to get through them and some of your visions and goals may not be able to be immediately obtained but you know given time you'll be able to work through those challenges and, and, and get to what really feels like part of you. My favorite aspect of this particular loft is really the front area. This is you know the more of the, the back is kind of the, the, the private spaces but the front is the big open area for entertaining and and just this this is the living area. So just the flow between here and, and you know a very large kitchen and just kind of to me it's kind of welcoming. My biggest design challenge was probably keeping as much of the historical aspects of the building or or just kind of the, the actual structure of the building and trying to update it while you know trying to keep you know kind of merge the feel of a loft but also trying to use what was already here you know the build, the, the project was actually a lead project so there was incentive to keep and reuse a lot of, of the items in the building just how to use those and also keep it in a contemporary feel was definitely a, a challenge to the whole renovation. For those who are watching who uh, aren't familiar with uh, LEED standard, the, the LEED is a, and it, it's not talked about as much currently, or at least around here it's not talked about as much currently, but it was a, a standard that was used to, to try to encourage sustainable practices and to kind of encourage environmentally friendly aspects in renovating and in building practices. So there are several several different layers, you know, starting with just certifi certified bronze, silver, gold, and then platinum. And you know, our, our you know the goal with the renovation process, you know, we really wanted to just shoot for the highest. So you know, the goal was just to kind of you know, do what we could to get this into a, into a platinum lead certification. Uh, do I have a particular historic story that goes with the building? The, the biggest thing was the fact that the building you know, was created between two existing buildings. And, and you know, I, I guess the, the, the biggest thing is just kind of seeing the one wall that has all the, you know, outside advertisement from when the building next door was the exterior, you know, that was the exterior surface. And so that's something that's it's obvious enough that people see it when they come in and it, and it always starts a conversation about, you know, well, what does it say? What does it include? And the fact that it actually continues both on, on this floor as well as down in the tenant space down below. You know, that, that's probably my, my favorite aspect of the historical aspect of the building. Honestly, there's not a lot that I know about you know, 
between the early part of the building and to, then through some of the prior renovations. But that's that's my favorite. Uh, the project, from a duration standpoint, took almost a year. Uh, probably probably a little bit shy of a year actually. And that's just the renovation. Um, actually finding a space to to make this happen took a, you know probably a year in itself. But then the actual renovation pro process, you know, had kind of had several kind of start and stop points because of challenges, because of findings that had to be kind of you know worked through to to, to move move forward. So uh, it was slated to take three months and it probably, you know, in, in the end from demolition to, to final construction, good nine to 10 months. Some of the biggest challenges in the renovation, again, were just reusing and reclaiming some of the, the material within the building while trying to keep it contemporary and still maintain the, the feel of the loft. That was probably the biggest challenge. Anything else I'd really want to talk about was just the love of being downtown, the love of being in an urban environment. Yes, Greensboro is not the largest urban center in the, in the United States, but it's still it's still great that it's kind of a you know there's a lot of walkability down here. Hopefully that will come back as as you know the pandemic you know lessens and we can get back to you know a lot of the things that made this a very walkable area.